I am Anchita B. Nair, co-founder and CEO of Culture, a creative and cultural enterprise that seeks to promote access, understanding, and experience of India's pluralistic cultural heritage through content, products, and experiences. Welcome everyone to our talk series uh, by Center for Museum. Uh, museums play a crucial role in building an informal educational environment. As they ride the currents of change, they still retain their power of legitimacy as repositories of culture. Being a center of education and influence, museums around the world have provided more than 18 million hours of targeted education annually, including guided tours, staff visits, school outreach, professional development for teachers, etc. Today, we will talk about the changing landscape of museum education and its need to adopt current trends in the country. We will also address the opportunities and careers in the museum sector. We have with us Dr. Savita Kumari. She is the Senior Assistant Professor in the Department of History of Art at the National Museum Institute of History of Art, Conservation and Museology, New Delhi. She has published several articles and books on Indian art history and its interface with world art history. Before joining NMI, she worked in leading art organizations, including the National Gallery of Modern Art as the assistant curator and the Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts. She's a recipient of prestigious national and international fellowships. For the past 15 years, she co-coordinated national and international seminars and workshops and co-curated several exhibitions. She's the secretary of the Indian Committee of Art History, which is affiliated with CIHA. She is also a member of the College Art Association of America, an international committee for museums and collections of modern art, an ICOM affiliated organization. Welcome, Savita. We are so glad you could join us for this talk series under Center for Museum. Uh, thank you, Anjita, for inviting me, and I look forward, forward to this interesting series. Yes. Um, so we've had a few, uh, you know, different topics around museums, and we thought, you know, museum education is something that most people don't talk about. So uh, one of the major functions of a museum is education. Museum education is an important part of the museum experience, offering visitors a unique opportunity to learn and explore in a hands-on interactive environment. It promotes a deeper understanding and appreciation of art, history, science, and other subjects represented in the museum's collection. What changes in viewpoint and trends in teaching and learning have you observed in the past 15 years? As a senior professor at the National Museum Institute of our country, educating students about global cultural history in the museum. Uh, thank you, Anchita, for your question. Uh, so, Anchita, like, uh, I would say, like, you know, I joined uh, as a student to this field in 2002. And, uh, and, and when I see uh, the same thing, you know, the same uh, 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 subject in 2022, so there is tremendous change. Tremendous change also in terms of uh, the people who are taking admission in uh, courses related to cultural heritage mm -hmm. and museum uh, education. So, like, uh, I, uh, so around, uh, you know, like in the beginning of uh, the millennia, like very few people who are really, really interested into it would come and join this course. So, like, when I was studying, there were like eight students in my class. Yeah. And, and uh, they were like you know already uh, some sort of uh, uh, they were in some profession and they decided to come and like you know it, it's a kind of uh, a skill an added skill but right. now very young people right from the college they know that they need to make uh, their career in this sector and and they come and the number also increased so we certainly see that there is more interest among youth in uh, subjects related to culture and museum. Mm. Uh, so one thing is that, and then also the industry, I would say like previously the opportunities were limited. Now it's opening up. Uh, uh, so we see uh, uh, more interest uh, in the subject. And also there's a lot of aspiration, you know, like among the youth. So they they consider it as a kind of new industry, upcoming industry, and they 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 certainly come with a lot of passion and energy, and and uh, know about the subject. It's not like mm, uh, they are doing it just like you know like adding one sort of skill or 
what's what's interesting is i think you know people from different industries are also joining the sector right like as mm-hmm. an architect as an architecture student i didn't think about becoming a, a you know exhibition or set design person but now students you know have a vision that over in the future we want to be associated with museums even if they are in different sectors right so yeah. um, that's very interesting you are right i mean it is becoming multidisciplinary Yes, yes. And, and now I think also like you know earlier it was like you know uh, uh, a kind of specialization is the blurring. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Because uh, it's the age of collaboration, mm. and I think no good project because the knowledge has become so advanced. So to deliver a good project, uh, people from different fields need to come together and uh, create an enhanced experience in the museum sector. So okay. it cannot be seen in isolation at all. Right. Absolutely. Uh, as museums seek to communicate, it is necessarily uh, to promote a conversation with the visitors, right? How does personal interaction enhance the growth of museums and visitors? Uh, uh, this is uh, really important because you know when you come to a museum setup, uh, uh, even today the building, for instance, when you look at the building, it's very formal right. and you know authoritative, yeah. so it is not inviting as such. Right. Uh, and and my experience in the National Museum, I would say like, you know, uh, uh, you've been to the National Museum and then you'll see like a lot of auto rickshaw wala would be there waiting for their the visitors to come out. So yeah. I asked them like uh, how many times they visited the museum and I've been seeing them for like years. Yeah. So they said, ma'am, ask that mega, you know, we, we never entered into that space. Right. So I told them like, you know, it's very cheap. And if the kids are coming, then it, it's free also for the students. But they never felt invited in that structure. Right, right. So I think this personal touch, you know, so so if uh, there is this human touch uh, to, uh, to the whole, uh, 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 you know, the manner in which museum invites the visitor is very, very important to make it more inclusive. Right. And, and sometimes you feel lost because the, there is so much collection. There are so many things to look at and you are going for one visit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you, you certainly need uh, somebody to, if somebody directs the, the experiences are more enhanced. Yes, absolutely. No, also, I think museums as a space, I think, are being reimagined now, right? I mean, even as a community space for people to come and do workshops, do events, etc., then their interaction with the museums become a lot more uh, organic rather than making, <laughs> deciding and coming and visiting the museum. So, yeah. Yeah. And museum also realizes, particularly in this post-pandemic era, you would see like, you know, a lot of museum, museum also uh, understood the importance of the visitor. They also longed for the visitor. So, so if you look into that, like National Museums, uh, how it changed uh, in a very good manner, for instance, like look at their programs, you know, like a lot of programs are uh, live streamed and, and also like something like museum at night. Right. Uh, it was never imagined. I remember uh, like if, uh, because, because of the security reason or whatever, like after six, Okay, the museum is closed. No way you can enter into that space. Right. But now, when it, it becomes so festive and and also very interdisciplinary, so it's not like you know uh, the objects are dead in a particular space, but like museums are trying to create the context of those objects. So, for instance, like when there are there are display of the ragbala painting, so we see that you know there are rags are actually practiced by the musicians. Wow. So so. So they were trying to give, uh, the museums are now trying to give a very enhanced experience to the visitors. Uh, so, and, and also like post office hours, you know, so like it, it is becoming a recreational space. Right. So important. And to see this happen in a government museum is amazing, you know. So, I mean, we had seen it in a few uh, private institutions, but I think the government warming up to it is great. Um, right. Uh, in the context uh, of your engagement in the art history and enrichment program for state school teachers and students, how have the programs been designed and implemented to provide visual experience to school children in rural and remote areas? Yeah, so uh, Anjita, like this is like one of our very dear pro- uh, projects, you know, which we uh, we undertook in our department. And what we realize is that like uh, students, if you still you know see around. When they talk about a history and uh, 
and culture so they think okay it's a boring discipline or like uh not very much interested so i mean we always thought like why i mean even when i was studying history and my other uh, uh, colleagues like you know my uh, fellow friends they were doing medicine or engineering they said like, how how can you do history right yeah. so i always thought like something should be done about it so so what was wrong in our basic educational system you know like the way uh, we teach uh, uh, heritage disciplines were probably not that engaging Hmm. so so we thought of having a look into this aspect and then we uh, looked into the curriculum of school uh, both uh, the ncrt books and also the books which are uh, uh, being used by the state governments hmm. and 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 then one thing which we realized is that you know when you look into the quality of the visuals yes. it's about art and culture yes. and the images are very important Yeah, but when you look into the books uh, for instance like ncrt i, I uh, so the images are not uh, of that high quality and i understand why because the cost needs to be kept yes. down right yes. so if you have a very high quality image then the cost will go and it is not inclusive with it yeah so so we start like how to you know uh, 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 overcome this challenge yes. so we started taking them pilot project and then based on the curriculum yes. we try to provide like whatever the curriculum was say for instance like gandhar art was there in in uh, in the uh, in the textbook hmm. we try to uh, to uh, narrate this whole period in a story telling manner hmm. so so it became very engaging for the student and uh, and and they really participated i mean we saw a lot of enthusiasm among uh, our students you know like and frankly uh, uh, i had um, you know like uh, some sort of bias i thought like maybe students would not be able to relate to it you know going from teaching at higher level and then you are going to the school in a remote yeah. area but there was so much of uh, so much desire to learn yeah. and, and and when we started this program so obviously initially uh, the students were like reserved but yeah. then they opened up and and then uh, they also wanted to uh, talk about their own culture you know So right. they realize that you know, okay, whatever is being done by her, uh, by their grandmother or mother or like, uh, say, Col Beat Colum or Ipan, for instance, in Uttarakhand. Mm. So they they thought like, okay, this is something very important, you know, yeah. and we need to share with them. Yeah. And their folklores and, and the songs. So, so I think you know, uh, art can really play uh, a very important role. uh if uh, uh, taught uh, in uh, not exactly taught you know if we can uh, interact with the students yeah. in a more holistic yeah. manner in context yeah in, in fact we keep talking about at culture about uh, how we should have social science labs you know like science labs uh, you definitely need social science labs where you can access virtual museums where you can access you know actual uh, artifact replicas to uh, inter- have interactive sort of learning experiences rather than just have these like textbooks with low quality images like you said so yeah it's very important to ha- start that interaction and also if students start understanding their culture and heritage is important then they will be more cognizant of it and then they start documenting it or start making sure that the next generation also knows it and that's the only way we can make heritage living right right uh, and, and also you know what I, i would like to share one experience so like one of my colleague she took her ipad mm. to the school and the ch- children are so quick to learn so you know yeah. they they know how to use it and we are very happy to uh, navigate through uh, the ipad and and explore uh, you know like this uh, we were talking about the story of buddha for instance you know like queen maya delivering the baby or uh, or uh, the journey of siddhartha from from his home mm. so so the if you change the mode of teaching and learning uh, right. it can make a lot of difference absolutely yeah uh apart from disseminating knowledge about the museum collections museum educators face obstacles and issues in sustaining programs in a museum what are the factors that must uh, that one must understand and implement when planning seminars workshop and programs for any subjects or for an exhibits longe- longevity uh see uh when you uh, one of the challenges which we are facing uh, uh, these days particularly in the government sector is the lack of human resources mm. 
uh, and and also uh, so that is one of uh, the biggest challenge i'm seeing these days and and one person is multitasking yes <laughs> uh, so, so this is one issue uh, but then you know when you are planning a kind of seminar and uh, workshop for uh, uh, we certainly needs to uh, need to look into uh, the outcomes actually we don't uh, what are our objective what what do we want to gain at the end of a program you know it should not be uh, just an event for instance right. we, we certainly should know what what are our takeaways hmm. because we are after all is spending public money you know and we are bringing money from somewhere so, hmm. so resources needs to be uh, thoughtfully uh, spent so we we must know like what is our objective and then uh, it is very important to uh, to uh, make it open like open to all like whosoever has the expertise should be able to be part of it but i have noticed is like you know somehow culture has become a very um, uh, protected space right. so so when you go to different events like you will see you will see same set of people yes. again and again yes. so so as if like uh, others don't exist yeah yeah uh, which is not right i mean because uh, so so there is one uh, i think you know when we are planning a program we should try and, and make it visible uh, mm. to a lot of people there should be a fair uh, uh, chances uh, uh, opportunity for everyone to participate in the event yeah. uh, and then of course you need to look into the funding uh, who is uh, funding the outreach yeah. and uh, and also uh, we need to understand that you know what is our main main objective mm. we should not uh, uh, digress from there right but so, you you've done a lot of these workshop seminars curated exhibitions do you see that uh, some are more more successful than the others so what do you think are these uh, you know what do you think is what makes this a success uh, yeah so uh, so again, it depends upon like, you know, like in, in the, the cultural sector or the museum sector is is vast, right? Mm -hmm. And and like, uh, maybe like one set of people are interested in a particular area. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and others are not interested in that. So you need to find out the right resource person and, and also the right uh, uh, kind of, you know, participant for mm -hmm. that program. Right. So, so, so there has to be uh, that uh, uh, in, uh, interaction. And mm. uh, what I have noticed is like, you know, like also need, we need to see the trends. Mm. Things are changing. So if you don't address to that change, uh, mm. it may become very boring. And, right. and people, you cannot sustain the interest of the people. And particularly these days, uh, they, uh, mm. they do not have patience. I, I'm seeing like, you know, the people don't have patience to listen to someone uh, for a long, long time. So unless it is interesting, unless they think that they are getting something out of it, outcome is very very important time right. is value you know? uh, do you have any examples or innovative programs that have happened in indian museums where you feel like they've you know caught on the trend made sure that they've you know engaged with the visitors etc yeah see i would say like uh, i'll give you an example of my own exhibition like company painting for instance uh, so uh, i would consider it as a success and and it's a very interesting story because this uh, this is probably the only exhibition in uh, which has happened in the National Museum, which was never inaugurated. Okay. Right. <laughs> so okay. what happened was like, you know, suddenly like, uh, but, but then what was interesting about this exhibition and, and the new trend, which is coming, uh, which is becoming very uh, popular these days, is that now this exhibition is not limited to a particular curator or a particular mm. museum. It, it, it became a very democratic space. So mm. I've seen like a lot of art enthusiasts, you know, the scholars, they created their own program uh, around the exhibition. Okay, okay. So that, that was very, uh, very interesting. For instance, like I've seen like, you know, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, this uh, organization called um, Ithyasology, for instance, like, so they, they had conducted certain tours and there were other private collectors and curators. So they were also doing their bits within yeah. the gallery so it is not like one person's show you know like okay the curator will come and they'll give you a walk yeah so, so i really appreciate that because nowadays i have think i i think like you know uh, it is uh, our joint effort and and, and uh, 
also what i notice is like you know uh, we may have a certain perspective when you curate a show there mm. is a certain uh, storyline mm. and when different people see it mm. the whole perspective completely changes right right so there were many things which i could come to know uh, from other people we have not seen it like that like you know uh, there was this guy who was talking about like you know they they like this uh, um, poet for instance mm. so so they on the online platform they curated it in a different manner altogether the show okay and so so these are very interesting uh, trends which are coming because of the social media and and rige shiva i mean i would i i would like to quote her name here because uh, i see like you know she is uh, looking after the education department of the national museum mm-hmm. and, and i have noticed like she tries uh, tries a lot you know to uh, to come up with a number of programs for different age groups mm. uh, uh, when uh, a, a particular exhibition or show takes place in the mm. museum right so earlier it was not there mm. okay. so so there is an attempt to reach to the community mm. to make the museum spaces more inclusive for all ages from different social background so i think these are some new trends which we are seeing in in post pandemic era particularly speaking of communities one of the aspects of museum education are outreach programs and workshops and these strengthen the local communities and their relationship with museums are indian museums really able to connect with these communities at a grassroots level uh there is an attempt but i would say the it is very it is still very limited you know scale is very small so mm. now uh, uh, say for instance like uh, national science center mm. you know i'll take an example from there so they have this uh, mobile vans uh, mm. and they take uh, some artifacts out there like create um, experiments uh, at at different different uh, places in remote areas even mm. national museum has also uh, attempted to take up exhibition to some rural areas Mm-hmm. and we uh, national museum institute like we uh, i told you like about our village outreach program mm-hmm. uh, so so there also like we uh, try to take up uh, exhibitions of mm-hmm. course uh, of uh, the replicas uh, to these places so that you know people can see so uh, where you don't have the museum at least they also have some accessibility to, uh, to it right but these are very uh, small initiatives right. and and the mammoth cultural heritage india has yeah. uh, and and each and every reason i mean we we have a lot to do in terms mm. of community engagement at the grassroots level we are yet to reach right. and, and make the difference right uh, in india we have on site museums at heritage monuments that house uh, an archaeological collection a rail museum where the exhibits are larger than human size and a personalia museum where images and written conversations are showcased are museum professionals able to ignite interest in its uh, museum collection utilizing changing trends with visitors from various backgrounds uh, there is uh, an attempt for sure uh, uh, again i'm going to quote an example from national museum because somehow i am connected no, to that to your experience so, so you know recently they have come up with this uh, buddha museum uh, and and uh, there is a whole narrative of, of uh, on buddhist art uh, from ancient to the present uh, times and, and also in that particular space there is one hall which is uh, dedicated to the display of only one object which is the representation of a stoop okay and it, in fact it has come to our country from thailand as as a donation from thailand and, and a lot of people Uh, the pilgrims mm. were from uh, different parts of south east asia particularly sri lanka uh, they come and and they have nothing to do with the museum anything else in the museum they okay. they come here as a devotee mm. they take out their uh, shoes and, and and go uh, pray uh, to the stupa and uh, uh, take uh, ambulation circumambulation around it wow so now uh, earlier it was this the artifact was in in gallery in a gallery with many other objects huh. but what naturalism understood the importance of that particular object in the life of the community so hmm. there is this 
whole hall dedicated to this particular object where and i became a meditational center wow okay so this is very interesting because you know like so so now this is not a dead space you know it's not an intellectual space it's, it's a very personal emotional space uh, uh, so so people are doing it and then i'll take an example from bihar museum yeah. so i had a chance to uh, visit that museum this is one one of the best museums in the country i would say uh, yeah. if you had the chance to visit it so so they are created this you know like uh, how archaeologists work with the children Hmm. So the so kids get uh, to see the tools, you know, experiment with it, uh, uh, and and there is a lot of audio visual uh, 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 context to the artifacts, which okay. which has enhanced the experiences. So museums are trying. Right. We are also trying. Uh, like what you talked about archaeology simulations. So culture has come out with a archaeology simulation kit. where students or young uh, you know uh, heritage enthusiasts can sort of learn how an archaeologist works with the tools and digs out uh, artifact replicas you know harappan civilization replicas or uh, punch mark coins or gemstones so you know again making it an experiential uh, sort of learning uh, um, experience so yeah so we are also yeah, very interesting you know i i i have been tracing culture <laughs> like what what you guys do and it's quite interesting i mean even this project of yours or also your cultural incubators for instance which you have created at, at different places so so this is very important and and what is interesting about this time is that you know again uh, a group of youth you know young people they have come together and they thought about it probably museum should have thought about it <laughs> yes absolutely yeah. yeah so you but but then it is good like, okay if the museum is unable to do certain things so there is somebody to take that responsibility right so that's right. the beauty of the sector now you know like yeah. so we are hand holding yeah in fact we are as the, as the center for museums we work with different museums to you know even create things for the museum shop you know museum collection inspired uh products so that is something that we you know we have start, we have started doing and uh, that's something that we really want to get into in a, a big way so collaboration i think is the key that like you said yeah. it you we cannot work in isolation uh the museum profession in india has gained popularity recently through the profession though the profession dates back to the early 20th century the fact is that unlike other careers such as doctor lawyer or scientist the skills experience and the academic qualifications for a museum professional are uh, amorphous and inconsistent so what does it take to gain mastery in this field uh is it primarily through the study of history of art or museology and what can the field do to further professionalize itself uh that's a complicated question <laughs> uh see it's right that you know uh this is an important sector hmm. and uh, we've been trying to develop it even uh, uh before the independence in fact you know there was this constant Uh, understanding of developing this sector uh, i would like to quote here uh, the uh, journal of museum association of india you know if you see like in uh, which was built uh, which was published in 1949 50s where you will see that the leaders were also involved about uh, 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 they understood the importance of museum uh, as a non formal educational center and that there was like constant uh, uh, debate going on like how to evolve this sector but unfortunately even today it remains very very uh, uh informal in the sense you know like there is no clear cut uh, uh, opportunities in the field right so and and uh, being uh, only art historian or museologist would not be sufficient because you need to you know uh, uh, fit yourself in different kind of context absolutely so yeah. so we need to acquire a, a lot of uh, different skills uh, uh, along with of course you one needs to have the mastery over the subject that is very very important but then also one needs to be flexible enough to uh, to you know uh, tailor one's knowledge to mm -hmm. fit in a certain uh, situations right so so can you like uh, name a couple of these skills for like you know our young uh, you know asp aspirants who want to get into the sector like 
know how if they could, so for example you know management skills you know this this is so important for a, a curator or a museum professional but that's not something which is usually taught <laughs> you know in in a museology course so um, if there are online courses that people can sort of uh, you know seek and uh, search like i think branding and marketing is something that people should uh, uh, look into uh, if they want to become museum professionals but is there anything else that you think definitely people should uh, uh, focus on uh, see uh, you know uh, like when you uh, uh, go through a curriculum of course mm -hmm. like say i'll give you an example of art history like we right work from ancient to the the contemporary uh, art history but when you it comes to the employment primarily mm. it is in the contemporary sector mm. okay so so i always tell my students that you know like it's fine like maybe we can be interested in anything but you cannot uh, completely ignore what is current in the market right so you you need to uh, uh, the young students particularly like they cannot be in isolation you know like uh, not interested and just uh, finishing their course for the heck of it this discipline requires a lot of hard work mm. and also uh, awareness about what all is going on around you mm. so i would say like when you are studying you must see visit uh, uh, as many exhibitions or workshops as possible so so and, and meet a lot of people right try and have the dialogue so so then you are aware of what is happening around you and you would know like how to mold your specialization for mm. the needs of the sector Right, right, absolutely. Read a lot, write a lot. So writing the skills, you know, like uh, writing skill is very, very important. Like mm -hmm. If you're documenting, so you need to, you need to be really uh, very uh, artistic, particularly, you know, you need to have uh, writing skills. And then, uh, as you said, like, you know, I was reading this book by a Professor Damodaran. Okay, right. And, and, and it's, it's very interesting, because I'm yet to get back to you on that book. But uh, what I liked about the book is like, you know, this uh, now, we all need to come together. Mm. Isolation, may, uh, if you are only art historian or museologist, uh, it will certainly not help. So, so, so we need to look into different uh, sectors. For example, like graphic designing is very important. Mm. So, so, you know, if, even if you you know art history, but how to uh, present it to the people, how to make it more interesting for the common people. Mm. So, the, so the graphics or or uh, uh, even like, you know, uh, making short films, for instance, mm. now the softwares are easily available. Mm. So one needs to like acquire all those kind of skills. So you go somewhere, you know, uh, maybe you have seen something which is interesting. You need to know how to document it pr present in a particular format. And now you can show it on YouTube. So, so, yeah. so one can be more visible using social media making it accessible online uh, reinventing online learning practices think agile way of working thinking of collaborations all of this has to be sort of brought in to you know make sure the trends you're caught up with the trends right it is important yeah. i mean i would say like you know uh, though I, I don't like to admit it but but i think you need to mold yourself fit yourself particularly in the initial ages initial stages of your career mm. uh, one cannot afford to specialize right right absolutely you need to to be you need to be versatile yeah. and, and you know like like stepney for instance in the car yeah, so you, yeah. you should be able to fit in wherever you are required so maybe so i tell the student like you know like you do so many courses so if you have specialized in modern art for instance so of course you're going for the job you say that okay see these are my skill set but then if you're doing uh uh gandhar or mm. mathura so you can always say like okay i have done this assignment on it and how good i am so how you present yourself you know it's marketing is very very important yeah yeah uh, with the coming of new museums in the country and the interest of upcoming generation in getting involved in the museum environment, are there enough museum opportunities out there to explore? Uh, nowadays, yes, because a uh, uh, lot of, uh, and the CSR also, you know, like uh, mm. corporate social responsibility, a lot of uh, corporate uh, uh, houses and uh, uh, are coming up with, with new uh, sets of museums. So the opportunities have increased. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll give you example of like you know like HCL is doing uh, as museum. Infosys in, is investing a lot. Geo nowadays like you know like yeah. uh, is uh, uh, focusing a lot on cultural sector. Mm. So that way, uh, so now it's not limited to only like a couple of uh, galleries or or museums you know uh, funded by the government, but a lot of other avenues are coming. Right. And and uh, uh, and also art fair I would say. Hmm. Earlier it was not there. Now so many art fairs and and and, and they are internationally recognized. Right. Uh, they are valued like uh, Binale is like Kochi Binale or like now Bodhya Binale has started hmm. and India art fair. So so look at it. So all these platforms are uh, have certainly increased uh, the opportunities in the sector. Right. And also we need more cultural entrepreneurs to think of the new opportunities as well, right? We need to create the opportunities the, the way you guys have done. Right. You know, so there was nothing served on a platter for you, right? right. Uh, so, 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 but then, but if you are an entrepreneur, then you, there is a lot of opportunity. Right. I mean, even if you look at Instagram, there are so many channels that focus on a culture and heritage and museums and they are uh, doing it there. They have followers, they have, uh, you know, they are making a whole uh, career out of it. So now the opportunities are a lot more than I think before. So I think students should definitely explore um, them. Uh, museums have educational purpose and cur- uh, curriculum to achieve their role in society. Are museums today successful in disentangling curriculum from its traditional context and giving it a new meaning in the changing trend and time? Like you yourself are teaching and you know, you're know you responsible for creating new curriculums. Do you think it's happening at the same pace as the trends are moving? Mm, I regret to admit that this is not happening at the same, play, the same pace. Uh, right. But we, we we must do it, you know, and and, and I think uh, uh, like national education policy, which mm-hmm. has come uh, in 2020, uh, it has noticed the changes mm-hmm. and, 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 and uh, the framework is uh, very interesting and it caters to the new needs of, of the society. For instance, it talks about like, you know, look into your local context, but also become international. Right, right. Yeah. So that is very important because, you know, first we need to have dignity in what we are. Hmm. And like, if you remember like the previous generation, even my generation for that matter, you know, you have this baggage of like, okay, uh, so the colonial baggage we carry. Yeah. So, so we always think like, okay, what is happening in the West? And then we somehow like, you know, we try to incorporate that model hmm. in our own uh, spaces, whether it is, whether it fits or not, we, we don't bother about it. But nowadays, like, you know, with this whole idea of like you know believe in yourself look into your own tradition and then that, that certainly cater to what was happening around the world mm. uh, so there is a direction mm. uh, from uh, the highest level like the, uh, the policy makers are understanding it but mm. now it is on us like teachers or the museum professional to what extent we are able to implement it so mm. now this whole idea of like multidisciplinary uh, disciplinary education mm. is part of it and I, I certainly believe in it, you know, because right. I have noticed like, you know, when you are creating one exhibition, it is not one person's exhibition. One right. person cannot create an exhibition because so many different skills are required mm. there. Right. Uh, so, so we need to look into that mm. and, and, uh, and, and, and then develop our curriculum accordingly. Mm. There has to be more flexibility. So right. rigidity will not work. Like, as you said, like, you know, uh, of course, like if I'm doing pure art history and I'm not seeing what all is happening around uh, uh, in other discipline, in architecture or uh, any other uh, other sector, for instance, uh, we will not succeed. Right. Because... Yeah. yeah. Uh, In many countries, students have gone back to their homes, uh, 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 like in countries or states, and might now now not have the opportunity to go back to the location of the university. Could uh, educational institutions or museums tie up with local museums in their respective states for students to provide facilities? or facilitate internships or practical experience, et cetera. Have you, like, have you thought about how you can tie up with museums for uh, you know, practical experience for students? Uh, 
yeah so like if i take uh, an example of nationalism institute uh, mm -hmm. we right uh, from the beginning in fact like you know uh, we have this uh, model that once the student completes their coursework mm -hmm. uh, we provide them internship and those internship can be done with any museum in the country okay, okay. right and, and the, the 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 basic funding comes from the institute itself Okay. So, okay. so, so it's a win-win situation uh, for like the museum because they are getting a human resource without getting to pay anything, right. and 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 we are getting our students with a very little investment. Hmm. Uh, 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 they are getting the skills right. To, right. to cater to the professional context, hmm. you know. Uh, so, so that is that is one thing which we are doing, and we are also having like apprenticeship program. Yes. So once they complete their uh, uh, their course, uh, so before uh, their result comes, uh, they can uh, work with us for a year yes. on on certain projects. So they also get the practical training there. But as you are pointing out, you know, like you are talking in a kind of larger context, yeah. and I don't think uh, again, you know, it's it's uh, limited to a few institutions. Right. We need to uh, expand. Right. No, like for example, architects or engineers, they have one semester or, you know, they have a period where internship is a part of their curriculum. So this becomes, you know, this, it has to become a larger thing, which every university does or every sort of course is, it's a part of the requirement. Otherwise, you know, it, it might, it might just be limited to the small set of students, which NMI caters to, right? Yeah. So, so, so uh, and then unfortunately, you know, like now the museums are coming up with internship. Earlier museum would not uh open up to other people who are not from uh, uh, uh from their own institution the Re reason being the security also you know like right, the course. artifacts are very very important but now they are opening up hmm. uh, but then internships are you know like mainly it's like free internships hmm, hmm, hmm. so again then I, I would think that you know it's not inclusive because uh, when it is uh, when they don't pay anything Hmm. Not everyone can afford to come okay. to the museum yeah. because there is a cost involved. Correct. So if Correct. somebody is from a weaker section of the society, they may not, even if they are talented, they are interested, hmm. they may not be able to work for free. Correct. Correct. So Correct. we should certainly internship should be paid, I would say, and we we have to work in this direction. Uh, I would like to invite uh, the audience members to put in their questions in the chat box. So that we can, you know, get maximum out of Savita. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, we had done a, day, a workshop with you, uh, Savita, if our NMI, and, uh, you know, we tried to get more uh, different kinds of uh, disciplines to sort of come in and uh, talk about, uh, you know, say brand management or, or policy making and things like that. Do you think more such uh, courses or initiatives will be? happen in the coming future uh, certainly uh, because you know we believe that students should be getting the practical uh, exposure uh, mm -hmm. so so uh, so of course we are going to uh, we we will be having this workshop which we did with you and also on different aspects like uh, we have multiple courses you know we offer courses on various aspects of indian art history and world art history and uh, with each course, we try and uh, uh, create a program which deals with uh, uh, the practical training. Uh, so recently, I will, I'll give you an example that we we have a course on folk and tribal art. Hmm. So we invited the artists, the practitioners uh, from uh, uh, different folk and uh, tribal art background to teach our students. Yeah, so that's so important. Yeah, yeah it is. So student get to see you know particularly it is very important for uh, uh, our new generation students because they are very uh, you know they are restless hmm. uh, and impatient so so when they look at the process of creation of the artwork hmm. they realize you know like what you see in a moment's time you you are not even trying to engage with a work of art for two minutes actually it takes hours uh, sometimes days to complete hmm. one work right so, so when they did it, they could value each and every stroke uh, that has gone into making of that artwork. 
right right absolutely no it's so important like for example we had taken a uh, design students to uh, bastar and kondagao in chatisgarh to show them what the process of say do craft making is or weaving or uh, ikosa silk etc so then what happens is when they are designing and they are cognizant of the kind of uh, you know effort that goes in they try to incorporate these folk uh, you know for traditional art forms in their design language so then you know orders are placed more for the kind of craft which is uh, being practiced the only way to keep these traditional crafts alive is to have more and more people engage with them right so exposure to students is uh, so important like it's the key for us to you know, make sure our heritage is continuing um, you know more and more so yeah you are so right because you know like uh, it is very important that you feels connected with the tradition absolutely yes uh, so that will make them confident in their own life and whatever they do yeah yeah and also this sense of respecting mm. uh, the people from diverse background so so who is uh, the teacher now you know when yeah. you are having this craftsman or uh, um or or even like a professor in the university everyone becomes a teacher you can learn from anyone correct so correct. so so that is very important you know uh, and, and also like urban and rural gaps can mm. be can yeah. be bridged in this particular manner we have a question mm-hmm. um deepshika says hello ma'am like icom is there any committee in india that works solely for the development of the museum sector uh see there are a few agencies uh, but not at the level of icom for instance uh, but then like intac is doing uh, a lot of work uh, in terms of conservation then you have uh, indian artistry congress which uh, which at least tries to meet once in a year uh, if not more and they come up with their uh, publication there is this archaeological society indian archaeological society Uh, so 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 these are like uh, not uh, non government uh, bodies uh, yeah. who are trying to uh, to uh, you know like further the discipline of art and culture right but you i'm sure you have to be a, a archaeologist to be a part of it like is it is it is it such a not exactly uh, but uh, uh, if somebody is interested it's open to anyone who is interested in the field okay oh, that's interesting Uh, but how do we come to know about this like you know you you talked about these three so where do we find out more about such places yeah anjita so that is uh, the unfortunate part because you know all these bodies they are like old bodies mm. and and they are very important bodies but somehow they did not uh, uh, it, it, their outreach is limited right right uh, so so the people who have sustained uh, the uh, our seniors you know who have sustained it but like you know like to give it visibility uh, on social media or on 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 or through website uh, okay. it is yet to be done okay so okay. so somebody needs to take i mean uh, initiative to you know like have this connect between the these professional bodies and and the youth i mean it's it's so interesting we need internships and there are these bodies which need young people to do these work <laughs> so then we should just need to connect them and yeah <laughs> and that's not happening but uh, hopefully soon something will come up but... and, and in in uh, archaeological society is right here you know in yeah the- i am yet to get the membership i know <laughs> the place <laughs> I, i also went to them and i said like how to become a member you know right. uh, and and they have been working hard for years hmm Uh, but again you know like uh, the, the uh, their uh, uh, reach remains limited to a particular community of archaeologists or art historian right. uh, the sub- subject experts right right but they can play a very important role in the life of uh, uh, people who are not specializing also hmm correct so kyu shah says it gives me immense happiness that finally we are discussing the subject previously it was like a trivial one why can't we involve retired people from the society who are interested in such works along with young people yeah it is important actually you know again uh, museum is a cultural culture is a space uh, mm. where, where uh, people from all age can come together right. and the senior people can certainly uh, contribute uh, in the life of the youth and youth can contribute uh, in the life of uh, the senior and this has been india's tradition also 
this mm. whole you know like if you know like da- dadi or nani ki kahaniya for instance yeah <laughs> it's like you know how through oral tradition mm. the knowledge has been disseminated mm. but but in this uh, urban setup and the nuclear family setup mm. we are losing that connect correct so what the uh, uh, learner audience is talking about is uh, very very important and this has been a part of our tradition actually connecting yeah. the different age group correct uh, but yes we need to develop programs around it right and make it accessible for people of all ages right i mean if if it is only online maybe it might not be you know easy for someone to access if they are not already familiar with these online programs but uh, one has to find innovative ways for outreach in these uh, you know in museums i think that's the key uh, takeaway uh manavpreet kaur arora says hello ma'am i would like to know if the museums are planning anything for preserving the intangible culture of india uh, the, uh, again it's a very interesting question uh, manav and and now see uh, if you see the change in the definition of icon mm. uh, about museum so intangible has been added to it Uh, right. in, in the definition, it was not there earlier. We were talking about museum housing, like thing, you know, the tangible uh, uh, aspect of the culture. But now, intangible is becoming a very important part of uh, it. And and uh, lately, very recently, it has it has been a very recent trend that uh, there is an attempt uh, to uh, look into the context which has gone into the making of a particular tradition. so so if we are having a textile exhibition uh, and i'll i'll take an example of an ongoing exhibition on 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 uh, jan textiles in the national museum it's it's on at the moment mm-hmm. so here the curator uh, what she has tried to do is like she uh, of course there are scholars who who research on, on the textile or on the painting but at the same time the weavers are also there right so we see how the practice is uh, uh, is uh, is being recognized hmm. uh, in all these academic spaces correct right. no i also went to a, a recent exhibition on on wool desi oon and they t- collected stories from uh, from different parts of the country where wool is become is a sacred uh, thread which becomes part of their rituals whether it's funerals or birth of a baby or or you know marriage and it, there now you see tangible and intangible sort of connecting and you know it become it's it, it's not in isolation right in india everything is sort of connected yeah. <laughs> uh yeah it's it's interesting so that has been a tradition actually in our tra- tradition tangible and intangible has always been woven Correct. together Uh, so like say for instance like you know this whole idea of fulkari for instance you know this uh, textile tradition from from punjab or from uh, from even some parts of gujarat so the way it is being practiced among the women so it's about their life it's about how uh, uh, a particular fabric becomes so important and integral part of the life so this i think this divide is again it's very western absolutely <laughs> yes but unfortunately we forgot we tried to copy that model we divided <laughs> tangible and intangible now we are bringing it back Up together correct yeah. uh radhika karnik says for an absolute beginner could you please recommend any blogs social media pages channels books to get started uh so if you are talking about indian art history i would say uh, there are some work by pa- uh, partha mittal you know indian art uh it's a very interesting read mm. and then there is this work by susan huntington mm. uh, and also if you look into the websites of the museum whether it is like national gallery of modern art if you are interested in modern art or or the national museum so so now uh, uh, there are like small write ups uh, 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 about different uh, about different uh, periods about uh, different movements uh, so that may help and and when you when you're talking about visual art for instance it is very important to see as much as you can so look into the website of say uh, uh, british museum or smithsonian and then this uh, getty getty is a very important site uh, where you can see lesson plans you know how to look at artworks 
Met Museum site is very interesting. Uh, so, so there are some very good sites where you can get a lot of information and also in a very lucid, lucid and, uh, uh, and easy to understand format. Correct. No, some social media pages are also very interesting. Like, like museum professionals, uh, say like Deepi Shashikadharan from Eka, you know, in on her site, on her Instagram and Twitter, she talks about, you know, I think jewelry and pop culture and that's a very interesting way of uh, looking at it uh, on the other hand sir maya is one of my favorite uh, social media has one of my favorite social me media pages where they make art very interesting and interactive for uh, audience so um, lakma uh, is another uh, uh, you know uh, social media page that has they do a lot of campaigns where they reimagine you know time periods and art artworks etc so so you know there are a lot of things going on, uh, which we just need to sort of explore. And Arts of Hindustan also, you know. Arts like, of Hindustan is great, uh, yes. So, yeah, you're right. But at the same time, you know, Anjita, the problem is that there are so much of information and there's a lot of noise. Oh, yes. so, so actually, I, it's very difficult to, uh, for younger person, you know, who, who never explored this world. Yeah. Uh, where is the which is the right site which is, which is the right source of information so, so let, me plug, also... let me plug cultures app here yeah. <laughs> we, are, we are creating an app where we will have we will curate information from uh, different places like what you're saying you know like take out the noise and keep the best and you know have short format content for uh young you know enthusiasts to just you know browse through and then if they're interested in that topic they can go ahead and read more about it you know That's so if this is in the making hopefully it'll be out in a couple of months and um, then radhika you can download it and <laughs> have a look at it. it yeah <laughs> yeah anyway uh i think we that's all the questions thank you so much savita for spending time with us and having this great uh, discussion oh wait someone uh, has also said some megha sharma says is there anything for archaeology and ancient history students yeah so you know like uh, what actually you are looking uh, at uh, it's not very clear to me but like uh, say for instance like we do uh, short term programs on indian art history or like uh, Indian and world art, art appreciation. Mm. So those are very interesting formats where you can uh, have a kind of glance, you know, uh, through how art evolved uh, in course of uh, course of time. And uh, also, if you look at look at something like Khan Academy, for instance, mm. you know, they have also very interesting format, and they'll tell you about like different uh, uh, art, uh, uh, different periods in the development of art history or, or uh, culture. Uh, so, so you can look into those videos as well. Okay. Right. Okay, I think people can write in their questions in case they have more and I will pass them on to uh, Savita. You can write to info at culture.in. Um, and thank you, Savita, for coming and giving us this wonderful, uh, you know, having this wonderful discussion with us. Thank you so much, Amstar, for having me here. All right. Truly we will continue right. this conversation soon, hopefully. <laughs> Thank okay. You. Bye bye. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.